today. We ask your blessings upon the, the new title of our administrator. We ask for a prosperous and a bright future for him towards whatever his endeavors are, be it working for the parish or whatever. <coughs> he and be within his path. We would also like to ask a special blessing for the Bessie Smith family, for her husband, Mr. Willie Smith, is pretty ill, but he's at home now. We ask your blessings upon him. Father, don't forget about our troops and our military throughout the world. Yes. These and other blessings we ask in your son's Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Turn and face the flag and repeat after me. I pray allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank yeah, I think so. Are there any agenda additions? No, I ain't <laughs> <laughs> On citizens' comments, citizens who wish to address the commission on any issue other than zoning, please fill out a comment card <coughs> in the chamber foyer and return to the president or the clerk of the commission. Individual co comments are limited to three minutes. And I have two cards. Um, first, I have Mr. Rick Foreman and his assistant, Doris. Well, I'm volunteers for Youth Justice. <coughs> State your name, address, and... Rick Foreman, 9045 Kingston Road, Shreveport. And I'm the executive director for Volunteers for Youth Justice. Doris Kelly. My address is 2720 Glenwick Street, Shreveport, Louisiana. And I'm the court uh, director for court programs for volunteers for youth justice. Uh, First, once again, I'd like to thank the commission for their consideration on funding this very valuable community program. Uh, we are making a severe dent in the truancy problem in uh, the Caddo Parish. Uh, this is, we feel, a community problem. Even Clay Walker has said the majority of the hard cases he receives can definitely be linked back to truancy. Excuse me, Mr. Foreman, are you all speaking on the ordinance that we're going to be passing today? Yes. Okay, well, can you hold those comments until we get to that? Sure. Okay, thank you. I thought that's why you were bringing this up. No, sir. Okay, then we'll come back. <laughs> Okay, my next visitor is Christian McCain. <coughs> okay. Mr. McCain, will you state your name, address? My name's Christian McCain. I live at 9647 Hempley Avenue, Shreveport, 71106. Come up here today to, uh, there are a few problems. Uh, come up here before, but uh, we're still having some problems getting the sheriff patrol out in my area regular. Two weeks ago tonight, I called until someone turned around in my yard. They did it again Friday night, and it was the second night before the Caddo Sheriff's deputy showed up. That was a little problem with me. Especially since I said, if you can't be here all the time to watch, don't I have the right to protect myself and my property? And he's telling me that we don't, because there's some homes in our area. There's no homeowners association. I live out of the city limits by half a mile. But that's the problem if they can't be there all the time. I have a camera out on my post office box out there for two months. Not one picture was taken of a Caddo Sheriff's deputy car turning around at the dead end of my street. That's a long time to go without some kind of patrol. The other thing was uh, about a year ago, I had some work done on my house. Some repairs done, and the contractor 
put in my septic tank when I called the health service department to come give me an inspection on my new septic tank they told me they didn't do that and if you call them because you got raw sewage going in the ditch they said they didn't do that either talk with a few people and say there's having problems getting some response from the health department so if y'all could give us some help with that we'd appreciate it now the other thing I came up here and one of the main things I came for today was about a year ago I come before this commission and asked for a detailed expense report from fire district 6 I've been trying for three years to get that and I haven't when I asked uh, before, y'all said as a taxpayer, we should be getting that. And I'm sorry if I go over three minutes, but I got a few documents here. Well, uh, we've had some problems show up. And when I asked the commissioner to put me on the fire board, I was told, well, to politely say it, might shake things up. Well, here's a petition from the area neighbors that would like for me to be on the board. Also, that they would like to see an audit done on fire district set expenses. We've seen a new fire district car riding around the LB Road area and over at the new J.C. Penney's <coughs> Jerry Drive. It looks like a Chevy Tahoe, something like that. Don't recognize the young lady driving it, but I've seen it several times. Then the other day, I saw the fire district six bush, uh, fire bush control vehicle down at the grave. When I called to ask them, they said they were called to ask to help maybe if there were fires along Clyde Fan. <coughs> they sent the truck and three firemen down there in the truck. I saw it myself. However, they're not manning that station on Linwood 24 hours yet. They can buy new cars and help out the city of Shreveport. I think the majority of people that live in the fire district because of the way that they drew that around the main station over at Keithville, I think the majority of the people live over towards Linwood, Wallace Lake, Mayo, Barron Road. Just paying for it. I don't know. I don't know the answer. But I did send this petition off with a letter asking the Attorney General's office to give them an audit for the past five years. I have some information here if y'all would like to have it. It shows uh, 2009, about the only thing I got was a summary from an auditor. And the one thing they did find that was non-compliance was $9,000 paid <laughs> for some kind of training and that was not in compliance and because the fire chief was unaware of a requirement RS-421120 and RS-421117. I recommend the district comply with state law. That's one of the summaries we've got. All the expense reports I've gotten, expenses are lumped in government oversight and fire district. That's all the expense data we can find. There's a lot of money being paid by taxpayers not getting looked at. I've asked for a detailed expense report for three years. <coughs> our uh, commissioner, he was with me when we went out there and requested that. I requested that from Mr. Thibodeau. It's been almost a year ago. And I come up here to the commission and requested that almost a year ago. I still haven't heard anything. Appreciate your time. Okay, I think a couple of commissioners want to ask you a question. Commissioner yesterday? Um, <coughs> Mr. McKay, on your first uh, concern that you raised with, with the Sheriff's Department, have you talked to anyone at the Sheriff's Department, supervisor on that patrol uh, unit? I did. Your concerns. I have passed those concerns on for quite a while about having some kind of, I know they can't make it every day, but I've asked for once a week, once every two weeks. We know we've got some problems in our area. I know I live on a dead end street, 
but they're robbing dead end streets in that area that are getting in control. I specifically wonder who you've talked to. Are you talking to the patrol deputies? Have you actually talked to a shift commander? Yes, sir. Supervisor? Yes, sir. I talked to them in the area meeting that I put on last year. Well, I suggest you possibly call them again because I, I know that they, uh, <clears throat> they're very attentive and they don't tend to drop the ball on things like that. So I'm sure I'd make another attempt at it and I bet they could accommodate you. As far as your sewage problem, uh, have you talked to uh, our director of public works uh, uh, or anybody here who can direct you to the appropriate agency or might lead you down the appropriate path to get those concerns addressed? Well, I've got the card from the health department and I've called and left messages. I actually spoke to someone when I asked for my septic tank inspection and he told me they didn't do that anymore. Well, perhaps you could call our public <laughs> works department uh, and, and talk to someone there who can at least guide you through the process and, and give you some information as to where you may go to get that issue resolved. Somebody may know where to go and I'm not saying it's necessarily us. Uh, and lastly, on your, your request for the expense report in Fire District 6, uh, did you, have you made that in writing to them? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, in, in cert, uh, by certified mail? No, I delivered it myself with Mr. Cox. Okay, and, and did you do this under the uh, Freedom of Information Act request? Did you use that type of vehicle? You just did it as a citizen? I did it as a citizen with the help of Mr. Cox when he was our commissioner. Perhaps need to cover your bases because they can say there was no record that they ever received the request verbally or written. You do that by certified mail and you request it under the Freedom of Information Act. I'm sure they will provide you with that information. If not, they'll be in violation of law. And I'm not sure uh, at that point, you know, what we really have no direct authority over them, but, you know, I. I I think if you do it properly, they'll provide you the information. Excuse me. Did you say they had no record of me ever asking for that? Well, if, if you didn't send it by certified mail, then, then uh, they can say they don't have anything. You don't have the return receipt. Are you following me? If you had a verbal conversation, they can deny the conversation every time. Witnesses on your board, and I also requested that information up here at the commission on the recorded session about nine months ago. Well, Mr. McKay, I, one, we don't have authority over them. You as a citizen have leverage at this point, and all I'm, I'm not trying to shoot holes in what you're doing. I'm trying to help you, suggest to you how you can get that information. Okay. And that would probably prompt them to act. I'm just trying to help you, sir. I appreciate it, but according to the bylaws, the Cato Commission, and I have that here, <coughs> does have the authority to act over those budget issues in Fire District 6. Or unless there's a problem or some concern raised, we don't have a fiduciary authority over them. We appoint the board members. That's it. We create the districts, and we can absolve the districts, but unless I defer to our parish attorney, we don't have direct control over that. So there's no elected official looking over taxpayer money. No, that's not true. We create the fire districts generally at the request of the citizens who need the service out there and then appoint those members from amongst you who are to serve your collective interest. But as far as the, you elect your own board, your own fire chief, your own board president. We don't have direct authority, date management authority over that's by state law. It's not that we, we don't share your concerns. I'm just telling you we can't walk in there and tell them what to do. bylaw or this thing here on the uh, bill where it shows the commission has authority over the budget issues is wrong then. Well, I think you're misinterpreting. We don't have authority over the budget issues of those in, those independent fire districts. No, sir. Not that I'm aware of. John? I'd like to dig into that because one, one of the uh, things that come back said it did. Well, I'll let you defer to our attorney. He's got 20 years in governmental law. Sure. Sir, the, the, the only direct authority that the, that the Cattle Parish Commission has over the fire district is they do appoint the members of the board to four-year terms, so periodically appointments come up for renewal. But they do not, this body, uh, the only other control this body would have is it, it, it also has a power to remove board members, which it very rarely does, but that's, that's, its, that's what its power is limited to. If the fire district wants to incur debt, they have to come to this elected body to have that action uh, approved. 
if they want to go to the people for an election to raise taxes or parcel fees or something like that, they have to come to this body for concurrence. But as far as operations are concerned, uh, the, the, the uh, fire district board has the authority to run the board, with, to run the district without the supervision of this agency. They are required to have an annual audit. The audits are filed with the secretary, with the uh, legislative auditor's office, and they are all available for inspection and copying on the legislative auditor's website. You can get, you can get a copy of their audit by just going on the legislative auditor's website. But, Bottom line is this: this does <coughs> not have the authority to. That's the one I've got. The, this body does not have the authority to come in and 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 basically take over from the board the responsibility of running the fire district. Well, that's the one I've got. You show all expenses lumped into two categories. Okay. So yes, they will receive a certified mail. This you, ask, you want a detailed expense? I want a report. detailed okay. expense. Do that report. by certified mail, and then then once you get the return receipt, you've well, got hard evidence that they've received your request, well, and whether or not they choose to comply with the law is up to them. I'd like to ask Mr. Cox and put it on this record: Did we or did we not give him a letter asking for the detailed expense report for Fire District Six during 2010? You sure did. I believe Mr. Cox. That's that all I want to know. Just, just because uh, I had handed that to Raymond Johnson, Johnson. exactly right, yes. the fire chief. I've had, I've had okay. trouble with fire districts in the past. Just because I'm a parish commissioner doesn't mean they treat me any different than they do you. And sometimes, believe me, I know it. So, well, the thing is, they're manning that one 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and the majority of the population, I believe, you look, is in the other <laughs> area where the second fire house is that they're not manning. They're manning it most of the time, but not like the 24-7. And we're paying for it. Send you the request certified, and, and I wish you all the luck. I hope you get it. I will. Thank you. Commissioner, excuse me, Commissioner Dominique. I'll just, just add up a couple things. When you send it certified, keep you a copy of it. Keep you I a really copy do. of what you sent them. And if that didn't work, you might even see a lawyer. There are ramifications well, that they have I've to supply that to you within a certain time. That's all I wanted to say. Appreciate it. Public records law. Anything or most everything is public record with the fire district. Commission, that's it. That's it. Commission Yeah. Do they have to give the detail for each and every expenditure, or do they just have to give the audit report as it's filed with the legislative auditor? Uh, Commissioner, all the financial records of any public body is a public record. So, whatever documents they have not just the audit, but all of their detailed budget documents, their expenditure documents, their checks, their check registers, everything is a public record uh, subject to inspection by anybody. Okay, then Mr. McCain, you and I will go to the uh, fire district. I'll go with you. And uh, either they or their CPA should have that information. And if we need to go to the CPA's office, we'll do that. Okay. And, we'll, and we'll just see what we find. And as far as your broke sewer, Mr. Rocky and I have dealt with some issues on sewer here recently, and we found that you're going to have to go through the state, and Mr. Rocky can email you the person. Oh, you got it. Is that the, is that the state? That's who we deal with. with the, uh, That's who I call. With the health department, here's the numbers right there. Paul Gibbs is who I call. We just had one done this week, so. That's who is I that, call. Is that the parish or is that the state? That's what the, that's what the state health DHH. department. DHH. Okay. DHH health right. department. They have plenty of hours. Yeah. You catch them this hour? We just got <coughs> <out. coughs> him just called who I have and who I call. Well, that, we just did one this week. So thank, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. We'll probably do that next week. I'll get with you more. Okay. Set a time and I can show there. you where that raw sewage is going into the oh, ditch I'm, up there. I'm talking about for the fire district. Okay. okay. Commissioner Cox. Uh, to dovetail on the raw sewage problem, I have made a phone call to the uh, yeah, name? Paul um, Gibbs. Yeah, Paul Gibbs. He never returns a phone call for unless unless somebody actually threatens this guy or threatens that department, they will not get out of that office and do anything. Y'all may have better luck than we do, but there's raw sewage coming out in that ditch. It has been for years, and they will not get off their seats to do something about it. So if we embarrass them enough, maybe they will actually get up and go do their job. When somebody has a complaint, man needs his uh, stuff inspected, they're telling him they don't do that no more. Who does? 
Mm -hmm. So yeah. the people out there are asking to get the mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to do their job anymore. My one goes up in April. Thank you, Commissioner Epperson. Uh, well, Mr. Tippett, though, answered. I was just wondering when Mr. Dominic mentioned to sit for him to see a lawyer. I would think that his commissioner would. Uh, you could readily get that information. You know, I don't think we send no citizens send to see no lawyer. We have got to pay him. We got a commissioner, but I see Mr. Tibbet will pick it up on that. He's going to help him get that information. That's it? That's it? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Lynch? Um, yes. Um, I'm trying to be clear on the guy that Commissioner Cox was talking about. He's in Baton Rouge. Local. I've got a local number for Paul Gibbs here. Where is he at locally? Uh, somewhere here with the health department. On Crestwell. On Crestwell. So he is local? Yes, next to the, next to the health unit. But, but they were cutting back, so we really, you know, they don't have the full-time staff that they used to have and before they started making the cuts across the state. But we don't know if he's still there or not? Well, they have an office there. But like I say, they have funny hours. Yes, they have hours. Meeting. The hours is not... Eight to, eight to five anymore because we kind of catch them when they can almost and i do know that they have an inspection on all of septic tanks outside the city limits yeah. and if they do mine after my warranty <coughs> which is this april i don't have any recourse to get it fixed yeah. if because it's out of compliance okay. i've been calling four times the same people okay well we kind of have funny hours too um so I think we, we, we ought to be able to, I'm over a period of time, catch up with somebody. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I believe that, too. Yeah. We'll say we can make the contact. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Commissioner Escudé. Well, I might suggest that uh, if it's a, uh, a pleasure of this body that we ask the administrator to write a letter yeah, yeah. to the uh, a supervisor of this particular department expressing our concerns about the lack of responsiveness to uh, the needs of the taxpayers and the services provided and maybe they'll get up the high up the chain and, and they'll find out what's going here and get these get them jacked up in this office here yeah a friendly letter but just wanted to bring attention to somebody above this gentleman that'd be nice and as far as mr dominic's concern uh, co uh comment about, about hiring attorney i don't think that's self-serving on his part you know but but you know i, oh, no. I don't think it needs to get that <laughs> 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 so they can get a lot of trouble yeah. Yeah. I couldn't afford one if I could. I couldn't afford one if I had to start, man. He needs some bad over there. Bow over, Mr. Mr. Wilson, will you write that letter? Okay, thank you. Commissioner Timber. Yeah, I was just going to say, it took a while to get it done, but uh, Randy Luck and I just last week had three people out from the uh, uh, the sewer department from the state to look at another situation and we got them all out at the same time to look at it so that you know then nobody could say he said she said everybody was there at the same time so that's what we'll try to do this time that'd be nice it's oh, <laughs> no other commissioners on here thank you so much thank you time. very much for your time okay. Lord, <laughs> body, all. It's all right <laughs> I have a uh, Clint Bartlett. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> State your name and address. Clint Bartlett, 1555 Wells Island Road, Shreveport. Okay, are you here to speak on resolution number seven? About the water situation, yes, yes. ma'am. Can you wait until we get to it? You ain't got a choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to wait. Yeah. 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 Is it? Uh, well, there's not a public hearing on that. Should he speak now or wait till we He can speak on anything. I, I, yes, I, I, think, I think he can speak on anything. Yeah. There's no reservation on Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, just like to uh, represent the business people of our area and talk about our water situation. Um, right now, we're on. Uh, we're on well water because when the water was cut off, we had to do something to provide our, our business with water. And it's, in a, it's pretty bad. It's got a lot of minerals in it, and it's uh, not good for our equipment. We have a 
a lot of diesel pumps with radiators and we use it to wash our equipment and our processes and um, we would be interested in, in getting a, uh, a water line run from, from Grimmett Drive to, to supply us with water there. Is that it? Neil? <laughs> <coughs> Madam Chair. I've, I've, well, I have a uh, Commissioner Lynn. I wanted to speak on the previous one. I, I will um, pipe up on this issue, though, now that I'm here. I, I went out to Wells Island and visited with several business <laughs> owners there. And ultimately, I, I wasn't looking to side one vote or the other and I hope I made that clear to them what I wanted to do was just vent the truth in in what they actually need um, the water apparently there what I witnessed was there were three different um, aquifers that people could pull from some obviously better than others and then y'all feel free to correct me at any point you, you feel that I'm saying something that's not exactly accurate um, and the owners of the businesses all had different desires. Um, Clint, um, we brought up that his water had a lot of salt content in it, so it's harder on his equipment. And that ultimately, though, he was he was more interested or initially interested in the fact that it, it makes the toilet and the sink stain a different color when he flushes the toilet and the sink. However, there, there is a filtration aspect that you could do to help that, like a, a membrane system that would help that. Um, another gentleman that uses a water jet to, to help make supply parts didn't care so much about that, but he, he needed more pressure, which a, a holding tank that was elevated ultimately could, could fix that issue. A third gentleman that I visited with who owns the construction company, I'm, if you could tell me I'm blanking out on his name. Central Construction. Yes, sir. Central Construction that they sent me to, he said, absolutely under no conditions do I want the parish to do a water line in there. And at that point, I said, well, tell me about your water. And he said, well, I've got two wells. i got a deep well and i got a shallow well. He goes, the shallow well, we wash off our equipment with it and it does just fine. The deeper well, we use that for inside the building. And, and I said, well, I wanna, I wanna see your, your deep well that you use inside the building water. And he ran tap water and I drank it and I smelled it. And it, I had used to have a lake house that had a high iron content in the water. And this water seemed like it had a higher iron content in it. Um, but you could drink it without making yourself sick. However, I do know that at the house it would the, it would stain the porcelain faster than city water would. And so rather than, a, than just a blanket dumping money on the problem water, solution, water, 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 um, that it seems did. that oh, they possibly are at a study. We're not talking on a resolution. We need to be No, I'm not, I'm not talking on a resolution. I'm talking about a field trip that I made the other day to visit business owners in Caddo Perry, oh, and I'm talking about what I experienced. And I'm not speaking for anything, and I'm not speaking against anything. Well, All I'm I, saying is that I, we I'm need to study the issue a little bit. I'm not sure I'm home. home. I thought I was sure I'm home. You are? <laughs> well, <laughs> stay in but anyway, ultimately, I'm finished. But thank you. Thank you, thank you Madam President. Let's keep our comments focused on Mr. Bartlett's came up and talked to us about his issue. So let us keep our, our focus on that. Now we do know that we have uh, resolution number seven on the agenda that we will be voting on um, today. So um, why don't we just listen to the comments <coughs> and any comments that we as commissioners have, let's save our comments for when we get to resolution number sure. seven. Thank you. Mr. Bartlett, are you finished? Yes. Thank you. Our next visitor, also on resolution number seven, is Tommy Straw. Actually, come on. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. Next order of business, Mr. Clerk. Uh, we have no visitors, we have no special resolutions. We move to communicate and committee reports. Are there any committee reports? Communicate. Uh, Madam President, I, I don't have anything, but I'd like to extend my uh, appreciation for 
the kind act you demonstrated today by recognizing my accomplishment, and I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, well. Mr. Officer? Under uh, uh, communiques, uh, Dr. Wilson, the you furnished me some initial information from the uh, that analog company that was supposedly handling that water situation. Yes, sir. Do you know where we where they are on the investigation? Have they contacted anyone? Um, not that I'm aware of any information. I mean, from what I heard, that there wasn't any charges being pressed against anyone <coughs> over there. Under the circumstances that I think <coughs> allegedly the bookkeeper didn't pay the bills that was collected. But I haven't heard any charges being placed upon anybody yet. So they did make contact with some people because the last report I got, you know, you stated that they hadn't made any contact with anyone, that it was under some kind of investigation. Right. So, so they have made contact with someone. Uh, now, now where, where are we getting this information? Is the sheriff, the police, or who? Well, actually, we contacted the DA, I believe. The DA? Yeah, Ms. Thomas is not here right now, so. She's out here right now, but I'll follow up on it if you like. Who, 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 Don, who knows about it? Okay, she had spoken. Yeah. Okay, now that's what I was going to mention. If we need to get uh, the DA district attorney, uh, you know, Attorney Scott in there to find out, you know, what's going on. Okay. She's not here today? No, sir. She went to a training class. But I'll, I'll follow up. Okay. And you know you in the morning. Would that be okay with you? Okay, that would that, be fine. Uh, <coughs> an update on Fire District 3. Uh, we have been working on a grant of 244000 from the State Capital Outlet Program <coughs> to help with the construction of a satellite fire station at the intersection of Lakeshore Drive and Jolly Napier. Uh, Chief Mitchell had uh, had gotten plans, had gotten bids, and he got to a certain point there was a change in leadership in Baton Rouge, so all that had to be done out the window so it would possibly be another 62 or 90 days before they free that phone. They said they had to take everything off about, I think he had the parish in the grant some kind of way so you had to remove that and resubmit just straight with fire district three so that's the hold up on uh, getting that station to be up there on jolly napier road and that's going to be a man station also on that side uh, the turn lane on i-20 west uh exit 10 that goes on the pines road and goes over the i-20 overpass the second lane is completed and working uh, got a lot of concerns about the uh, lights being installed. They had to remove the lights to widen the road, so the new lights have been ordered and uh, and uh, will be delivered. <coughs> to be installed and operational within 60 days. Uh, I'd like to also give uh, give an update on the uh, on the commission informational meeting for District 12 that was held on January the 24th. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Wilson and all the staff of the commission, all the other agencies that came out and provided uh, informational uh, personnel to the citizens that came out to help answer their questions on that day. Uh, as always, I do a survey to all of the, uh, the uh, constituents that come out. Uh, I got the results of that survey. Uh, as we're tight business the economic development initiatives would like to be seen in the West Freeport, West Caddo area, District 12, shopping malls is the highest, dining and restaurants, another grocery store, major department stores, Department of Motor Vehicle Office, and State Unemployment Office. Uh, resident of District 12 uh, also asked what would improve the quality of life, industrial manufacturing jobs, more code enforcement. Uh, within the Shreveport City as well as the Greenwood uh, construction of a, uh, of, a, of a roadway from Jefferson Page Road south to <coughs> Greenwood Road to provide emergency outlets in the event of flooding or any natural uh, catastrophes that may arise. Uh, also gave an in-depth uh, explanation as to the situation with the Juvenile Services Fund and that question on the survey read, 
The juvenile services fund was approved at 1.89 meals in 1957. It has been operating at a deficit for a number of years. The deficit for 2013 is expected to be 2.9 million. The fund has been operating at the same tax millage in its inception since 1957. If you understood the problems and consequences relative to the deficit, would you vote in favor of an increase in the tax millage for operation of the Juvenile Services Fund? Yes, 67%, no, 15%, undecided, 18%. Would you be in support of or like to see a zoo in the Caddo Bozier areas? Please note, it would not be sponsored or operated with Caddo or Bozier tax funds. Yes, 81%, no, 10%, undecided, 9%. Also asked to figure the constituents thought these meetings was productive, it was 100% yes. Also asked that they better understand the role of parish government, yes. The final on a scale of 1 to 10, based upon your experience, how would you rate the services provided by the Cattle Parish government? We are rating of 1, 0%, 2, 0%, 3, 0%, 4, 0%, 7, 5, 5, 7%, 6, 0%. 7, 30%, 8, 26%, 9, 15%, 10, 22%. Overall rating of 8.1. And we thank those citizens for coming out and participating uh, within that venue. Also, uh, I will give copies of this survey and the concerns that the constituents raised in writing to me to the appropriate person, be they city council, uh, state senators, or state representatives, because the district encompasses a lot of those things which are uh, jurisdictions that's not, <coughs> not the responsibility of the Cattle Parish Commission. Uh, I'd also like to mention something to all of us that we should be cognizant, that we should be aware of. The Post Postal Accountability Act of 2006, I'm sure many of you heard about the possibility of Saturday <coughs> mail delivery will be severely curtailed in August of this year. Uh, just like for you know that when you go in the post office, the line is long. Your mail is not being delivered until 7.30 or 8 o'clock at night. You <coughs> have to mail the day before. It's because basically of this act, which is held up by Congress. And one thing to remember that tax dollars does not form one iota of the United States Postal Service. So if anyone tell you that, that's a fallacy and it's totally untrue. Uh, one provision in this Postal Accountability Act is that Congress has directed the Postal Service to fund their pension and benefits for 75 years in advance. The amount that they contributed in 2012, I suppose, contributed $11.9 billion. If it were not for that particular provision, the Postal Service would be operating at a $1.9 billion uh, profit. It'll be the 35th largest company of the Fortune 500 companies in the world. This bill allows, curtails anything that the Postal Service want to do to enhance the quality of the operation, diversify with different products that can enhance it to be more efficient and effective. Just like they gave banks the authority to sell insurance, do investments and all kind of false things, it appears that though this legislation is directly attributable to trying to put the Postal Service out of business. And remember one thing, this will be a blow to small businesses. If you got a rural road in your district, five miles long. You have two residents on that, on that road. The Postal Service is going to deliver that mail. But if you're thinking that United, uh, UPS or FedEx or any private entity will deliver that mail to those particular places for 46 cents, 47 cents, you're sadly mistaken. That's right. So we just want to bring that uh, to your attention. And this will be an item on our Labor and Employment uh, Benefits Committee uh, coming up in our March legislative session in Washington, D.C. was on a conference call, and this is one of the major issues on the table. I also note that the United States Postal Service is one of the largest employers of veterans, always have been. So it's a great econo economic impact that's going to hurt us uh, severely. Uh, I've gotten a number of uh, concerns relative to the situation with the gun regulations. I don't know many of you that may have been around in the 90s, Commissioner Michael Williams and myself, once we got elected on this body, 
we attended a conference in Hennepin County, Minneapolis, Minnesota. They had a, a program there uh, called Drop Your Guns. The murder rate in Shreveport and Caddo Parish was the highest per capita out of the United States of America back then. That's right. Gang violence was rampant. We bought that program back. The gun buyback program that you see here about now, it's nothing new. We did it back then. It was effective. We got a dialogue among the community by talking about this. We focused on the issue, and we went for almost a five-week period of time where there was not a drive-by shooting or a murder in Caddo Parish. That's right. Because we had a dialogue. But we just want to uh, let everyone, I want to let everyone know my position because I've been called and asked for interviews on the news about it. <clears throat> my position is uh, I have a BB gun, I have a Lawson 380 automatic, and I have a six shot Ruger 22 revolver. And I don't believe nobody is going to take that away from me. I had a, I had a use. Uh, 1965 to 1968 when I was in the military for an M14. That was the best that we had. 10 round magazine. We graduated to the M16, the AR15, the M2 carbine. But I don't need nothing but that BB gun, <laughs> that 380 automatic, <laughs> and that 22 5 shot. I have no issue with registering when I bought my particular weapons. I have no issue with having to go down and get a driver's license paid for it. When I buy a car, I have to register that. I have to get tags. Mm -hmm. uh, even when you go online for email, you have to register. When you open up a checking account, you have to give all kind of information about you that goes everywhere. And if I thought that I was in a nation where if I had to have a weapon that is used totally in a war environment to kill multiple round magazine and automatic capacity, I would not have enlisted in 1965 in the military because I have confidence in this government that even when I enlisted then, I couldn't sleep in the same hotel with all of my colleagues. Mm. I couldn't eat in the same restaurant. Mm. But hey, I didn't run off and go to Canada. I never lost faith. I have about as much faith as the Emancipation Proclamation being repealed, then I do that the Second Amendment will be appealed where the government will come in and I need something to fight the government. <laughs> and I've been through a lot, so I want to let everybody know my position uh, on, on that particular issue. Uh, our legislative priorities, I want to make sure that I publicize them because I, I told them to my constituents in the meeting the other night, I told them we had a new situation where we have to be scrutinized and voted on whether we can go down and represent them uh, by a majority of this body, even though we have 12 separate districts where we are elected, 14,200 registered voters in line, 22,000 citizens overall, basically different philosophies and concerns as other people. So I want to let everyone know what I was going to be uh, focusing on based upon the wishes of my constituents and hopefully uh, these are some things that we can all agree upon. Uh, we're going, I'm going to, ma'am. How much longer do you have? Uh, you once I finish this, five minutes. Yes, ma'am. So this communicated in the poets. I know. We, we need to inform <laughs> the citizens. Can you make us a copy of that? And just give well, us a I, copy I think of the citizens need to know because you know, and they can come back and pick it up. I won't be too long, but these are some things that we need to think about. Uh, telemarketing phone calls. No calls after 6 p.m. on weekdays, no calls on weekends and holidays. And see, my reason for bringing these up is because when I went to Baton Rouge, I never heard of any legislation that was bringing things up in behalf of people. It appears as though our elected officials are going to special interest group and big donors. That's right. But these are issues that people are concerned about. Every once in a while, they'll throw a bone on and bring it back and see if this is what they, we've done. Uh, customers, uh, reevaluation re of the 40% field surcharge on the electric bill. Could we look at that again and see if it's possible that we can split that 40% and put 40% on field surcharge and 40% on upgrading equipment so we won't have so many power outages and failures? 
Reveal a $10 and $16 residential and business customer charge on, on, on bills. They charge you $10, just say a, a billing charge. And you can go online and opt for paperless, get it automatically deducted out of your, out of your uh, 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 checking account. And then you still, when they mail it out, you got a bunch of stuff in there that you don't want. I just don't think it's fair. And that's a tax. I have three other commissioners who also have communicates. Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll make copies and finish finish up. I thank y'all. Thank you. Commissioner Lynn? Um, I'd like to thank Animal Services mm -hmm. and especially Officer Mims for going out to the 900 block of Boulevard last Saturday morning and removing a family of possums from underneath the person's house. They actually crawled underneath there and got them out. And so I appreciate that type of service. I got a phone call from the residents over there and they were very grateful. Thank you, that's all, Madam President. Commissioner Lynch. <laughs> yeah, my, my grandfather, we like to talk about. Uh, right, let me get, uh, let, me, let me ask yeah. on the, we have a couple of those. Uh, Request for road revocations on the uh, for introduction. Are those are we getting those verbally or do they have to be written? Okay, let me ask Robert to answer that question for you, ma'am. <coughs> okay, can we get a little, little notation like we get on the adjudicated property as to who's making the request? Yes. Okay, I'd appreciate that. That would be helpful. Um, the other uh, question that I had was about, and I know we've talked about this in the past, and I'm not sure if this is something that a committee needs to take up uh, or if it's something the administration needs to look into, but uh, we've talked over the years about having a grant writer for the parish. Um, you know, every time I'm looking at uh, American City and County Magazine or county news or uh, governing, um, <coughs> there are so many cities and counties getting money for stuff that we're using. We're not leveraging our taxpayer dollars uh, with federal monies to do some, just some of the things that we're looking at doing, talking about spending millions of dollars on other people are getting money from the feds to do. And um, I think I may have sent you this article, I'm not sure, but even on the underage drinking, there was one county that actually got federal money to help them reduce businesses in their counties selling to underage minors. And of course, you know, we've had many cases on that. And I went, they get money for that? I mean, you know, so um, there, there's just so much out there and so many programs, so many initiatives that we're not really tapping into and leveraging our resources to get um, that funding. I'm not saying that we need to become dependent on it, but there are certain, uh, you know, areas even with uh, the water um, projects. You know, I'll see from time to time something that's just so similar, it's almost like verbatim what we're doing, that people are able to use uh, uh, federal dollars to, to assist on some of these. So. I really think we need to um, really take a closer look at that. What are our options in terms of getting a grant writer? The other, um, you know, we just came back from uh, a lobbying trip in D.C. And, um, you know, I mean, I've been convinced for a number of years since we've been going there that we do need a federal lobbyist. Uh, I think it's, it's uh, more important than ever, and, and certainly, definitely at the state level as well, but certainly um, at the federal level, um, I think one of our commissioners found out that we, we had a reputation of, uh, of not even being able to read in Louisiana. I mean, some people have a different viewpoint of who we are and what we represent, and, and sometimes when you're not at the table to, to let folks know that we can read and write in Louisiana. Uh, they take that and, and, and you know, just kind of look over you. Um, but again, this is just a way for us to try to leverage <coughs> the resources, the vast resources um, that they have there and harness it to make sure that we can get, that it makes it down to Cattle Parish. I mean, we go there once or twice a year. 
we have a very limited amount of time to spend with our representatives. Um, we may be able to catch them sometimes when they're at home, but the fact remains that a large deal of the work is done in committees. It's done uh, through the agencies. It's done by their staff. And you have to have somebody there to bird dog these projects. Um, and, and while you know we're there and we can give extra push and influence to it, it's that everyday working, uh, you know, how that system works in there, that you have to have somebody bird dog in your projects. And so I know um, that we uh, tried it with someone that didn't, you know, wholly go the way that we wanted it to. But, you know, probably you, your first girlfriend didn't go for you right either. <laughs> but you did stop dating. So I think that uh, we need to, to make another run at that. I don't know what committee or whatever would take that up, but uh, I think we do need to look at it uh, seriously. Baton Rouge, New Orleans, every major parish has uh, lobbyists uh, either working on their behalf, actually in D.C., or that's their job to make sure that they're very dogged projects for their uh, parish. And with Cattle being the fourth largest parish, I think the best in the state, of course. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think it's just time for us to step up to the plate. Now we got a doctor uh, heading the ship. Congratulations. Um, but certainly, we need to make sure that our place within the um, state, within the region, is protected. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just uh, want to take it back over what Commissioner Epps was talking about, uh, those weapons. And I have challenged the legal department to craft a couple of resolutions uh, which will help us maybe to defer crime and shooting and killing amongst our children, our young people. Um, resolution regarding prohibited and sales of uh, automatic assault weapons and rounds. And he explained to me that there's a, uh, that there's a statute in the state statute that which uh, don't allow local municipality and government bodies to um, legislate the sale of uh, assault weapons. Also, I'm concerned about the health and public safety uh, of our facilities, the governmental facilities. Uh, right now, there is only one facility I feel that is prohibited to carry guns and knives. And you see where the sheriff had connect, uh, collected uh, several knives and guns or some of the building. I feel that all these buildings are subject to some type of someone uh, mentally challenged or someone in the right mind. May take them out of their own head and they may want to hurt one of us, one elected official, or want someone in the room. So I think we need to uh, be proactive and, and recognize that we all are in danger because uh, nobody's immune to somebody with a gun uh, or a weapon. So we need to look at maybe passing a resolution on all public buildings, parish buildings, prohibited guns and knives uh, in any facility. I know our library has a placard. I'd like to see us consider that. I do want to. Uh, send a resolution to the state and to the governor, uh, maybe to give us that authority uh, to prohibit those ones, uh, guns, those type of guns that we consider uh, dangerous, dangerous to mankind, uh, to allow us the opportunity to uh, prohibit those gun sales at gun shows and background checks, and give us that, uh, give us that authority to do that uh, on the on the state level. Can you tell me where we at on that right now, Mr. Webbs? We're going to have that resolution for you at the next meeting. Perhaps uh, two resolutions. Uh, <coughs> we're definitely going to have the resolution. We're going to talk to you about both of them, Commissioner, but the resolution on the, the urge of the legislature to change the law is definitely mm -hmm. uh, uh, going to be on the agenda. The thing about uh, regulating weapons within, we, we can regulate, the Commission can regulate weapons within the buildings that it owns. Um, We've, we've gone through this in years past in terms of, um, of, of regulating what people do uh, outside of public buildings within the city limits of Shreveport in that 
the commission doesn't have police powers. The, the commission does not have police powers within the city limits of Shreveport. That's the city that has those police powers. So, for example, uh, several years ago, when y'all wanted to change the smoking distances around <coughs> commercial buildings in the in the town, uh, y'all I think passed a resolution uh, urging the city council to legislate in that area, which they did to increase the, the, the length. So what I'm saying is, as far as what you want to do about regulating, about prohibiting the weapons in public buildings, if they're buildings that the parish owns, you can you can do that as an owner of the building. But if, if, if you want to legislate through police powers uh, to uh, limit or, or eliminate weapons in all public buildings in the city, uh, the, 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 that's going to have to be something done in cooperation with the city council. Well, I, I, my intent was not to for you to assume that. Specifically, I was, since I govern here at the parish, I'm talking about parish building. Okay, and well, if we, and if we can do a joint venture with the city of Shreveport. The, the, parish, the parish buildings, as I said, is, is no problem, and that can, we'll have something. Yeah. We'll be talking to you about that between now and the next meeting and get something done. But, but basically, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, citizens, we're talking about weapons, mass destruction, <laughs> and only do one thing, to kill people, not to shoot deers, to shoot people. So uh, we go have to bow up as elected officials and put some iron in our back, not be afraid of NRA, because it could be someone child in Newtown, but it could be somebody town here in Shreveport and cattle. So don't think we are immune because we're in the little south. And we are sportsman paradise. That's our slogan, I know. And and we're not trying to take anyone's Second Amendment rights away. I don't own a gun, I own a Bible. That's all I have. Maybe I'm ignorant to believe that I can't get shot, but I don't own a gun. But I do know the Lord is watching over me, but I do have sense. Um, so I hope that uh, we would consider supporting these resolutions based on the facts, and the facts don't lie. So I hope <coughs> when the resolution do come, have some courage, make some tough decisions. We're not talking about shotguns and guns that are legal. We're talking about guns that should be taken out of circulation. It's all about the money. <coughs> it seems like somebody had to lose a life before we start legislation, enacting legislation and making new laws. Let's be proactive and not reactive. I look forward to working with you and others on that as well. Thank you. If I might, Dr. Wilson, could you invite uh, Mr. Gibbs from the uh, health unit at our next work session? Mr. Who? Gibbs? Right. Uh -huh. He's the gentleman that uh, gives the jurisdiction rather to the uh, septic septic systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's get him here so he can tell us exactly what's going on over there. Because I have I've had some issues the same way. And also on our March 8th uh, legislative uh, meeting with the legislatures, would you invite the Public Service Commissioner? Mr. Campbell, okay. the legislative meeting that we're going to hold on the 8th so we can get with our representatives. Yes. I think the Public Service Commission needs to be there too because there are some issues that uh, could possibly come across, his, that should come across his desk also. And, uh, at this time, uh, Madam uh, Chair, I think we have not suspended the rules or anything, so basically, uh, we are on the communication and reports. I'd like to make a motion at this time relative to uh, committee reports and communicate if I can get a second. Second. And uh, I'll pass it down if you all would. And it reads, I move that no formal action be taken by the commission body on any issue that was deliberated in an official commission meeting, committee meeting, until such time that all deliberations in said committee meetings have been transcribed to writing by commission clerk and formally presented in an official work session of the commission for perusal and adoption to be entered into the official proceedings of the work session prior to any formal action on recommendations of the reportings from that particular committee. If I can get a second. A second. Part of all, we have to expand the agenda. Both done that to expand the agenda. We have to have a 
begin the expansion. <coughs> Am I correct, Mr. Yes, ma'am. The agenda has to be expanded first. Okay. I didn't hear you. What did you say? Well, this is an item, Commissioner. This is an agenda addition. This is an agenda addition, um, and uh, so the, the commission would first have to extend. Let's allow me. My next question is this: We've already passed agenda additions. This is on the communication and reports. Can we do <coughs> like this on the communication and reports? I, th I think you could suspend your rule. Yeah, I think I think someone could make a motion to, su to suspend the rules to add this to the agenda. Uh, uh, <coughs> agenda additions require uh, on the date of the meeting. Agenda set uh, ad additions require unanimous uh, vote. Yeah. Requires what? Under, under the old unanimous. Okay. Uh, then we also have to let the public comment before we vote on the two. That's, that's, that's correct, Commissioner. Yeah, the, 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 the <coughs> Madam President, if if the motion is made, you simply have to ask, you have to announce to the public that if they if they desire to comment on it before the vote, the vote they have an opportunity to do so. And then the vote takes place and the vote has to be last. Okay, so now I need a, a motion to suspend the rules for an agenda addition that we've already passed. Because we are the communication and reports. We have passed the agenda addition. I asked earlier if there were any agenda additions, and no one said anything. But so now in. we're asking. It come up at any time. All I can tell you is I, I, there's no uh, the, there's no legal issue in bringing this up at this time. The 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 order of your agendas is set by commission rules so if the commission wants to suspend this rule to bring up something new it can do that but then it just has to follow the requirements of the open meetings law in doing so thank you yeah. most if i might man i just want to you know make it clear that uh you know, <coughs> this would have been on the agenda addition i would have done so because when you say communicators and committed reports you know what i mean uh, and we have not, you know, like we used to say, uh, move to suspend the rules, allow the citizens to address the commission. So that way we could not vote upon anything. You know, we just had to listen. Then we say we move to go back into regular session. Then we're in a formal uh, 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 mode where we can vote on something. Since this is on the agenda, say communiques and committee reports, uh, I thought it would be uh, proof that it would be relevant that we could make a motion here, and all we're doing is changing the ways that we make our committee reports in the future because it's on the agenda. So that being my reason. I understand okay. and I understand your reasoning, but I've always known that under commit communications and committee reports, we only did communications and committee reports. If we had an agenda addition, the the agenda addition would come up under agenda addition. But since we have the authority to suspend the rules to allow for agenda additions at this time, I would ask for a motion. So moved. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Johnson, second by Commissioner Williams for an agenda addition for rules. to suspend the rules for an agenda addition. Wait a minute. To and suspend then the rules to allow for the calling of an agenda addition. Correct? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Yes. Well, this is just to suspend the rules, right? Suspend the rules. Suspend the I got to make the motion. That passes. No. Nope. Oh, no, it don't. No, that passes. This is just to suspend the rules. That passes. Rule. Now we go to, to whether or not we want to take this last minute issue up. So, with this vote, this has to be a unanimous vote. No, the next one does, yes. That's what matters. Yeah, this the one, one we're about to do now. Yeah. Has to be a unanimous vote. This is to add this to the agenda. To the agenda. Correct. Is that correct, Mr. Grove? <laughs> the addition to the agenda <laughs> has to be a unanimous vote. Right. Okay. We're fixing to vote on that. Whether or not we're going to add this to the agenda now that we've suspended our rules, Madam Chairman. Okay. Are there any more discussion before Let we just <laughs> Let me know about. Uh, there will be times you want to add the, something to the agenda. I hope you take that in consideration. Whether you vote for it or not, we ought to allow people to bring stuff up. Thank you. Commissioner Escudet. No, your name no. is up here. No. That's 
Can I, can I be sure who moved the motion and second to add the agenda addition? Johnson and William. Okay, just want to be sure. You need to be clerk. <laughs> That fails. That station is supposed to be a no. Next item. Next, we move to adopt the minutes of the regular meeting held on January 17th. <coughs> so, move by Commissioner Dominic to take my commission yesterday. Um, discussion? Yes. There, um, I just want to make sure before we publish it, although it may be a party and slip on here on, uh, on page 342. It's to alter the makeup of his adversary board. Yeah, it's the it. advisory board. I'm looking right at it. Okay, we'll fix that. Thank you. Anything else? Anyone else? Oh. Please vote. <laughs> That passes. Next, next item. Next we move to public hearing ordinances. Ordinance number 5286 of 2013. Amending the budget of estimate revenues and expenditures for River Oak Fund in the amount of $60,000 for truancy. <coughs> anyone here to speak in favor? Mr. Rick Foreman and Ms. Doris Kelly. Name and address again? Yes, sir. Okay. Rick Foreman, 945 Kingston Road, Shreveport. And Doris Kelly, address 2720 Greenwood Street, Shreveport, Louisiana. Okay. That's my classmate. Look at T-Rex. There you go. Uh, once again, I'm the executor for Volunteers for Youth Justice. Uh, I'm sure everybody remembers what I said when we were up here earlier, so I'm not going to reiterate that to take up uh, valuable time. But uh, I wanted to bring Doris today because Doris is the director of our court program. She is the one that is down in the trenches running the truancy <coughs> program. So she's here today to answer any of your questions. If there are any <laughs> remaining questions, uh, this truancy funding issue has pretty much been debated inside out. Uh, you know where we stand on it. So if you have any other questions, Doris will be happy to uh, address them. Commissioner Lynn. Could you tell us what you do? When you when you wake up in the morning and I'm you sorry. go and you go oh, out. This is public here. We'll tell you asking questions. I'm right sorry. Oh, sorry. Good try, Matthew. Thanks. <laughs> well, I was asked, they asked if I had any questions. I'm going to hang around the mic too often. I know. No, chill out. You got to chill out, man. Oh, yeah. Tell me to say. Go get your bushy case. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that I have to say is I know that the families will benefit from the truancy program because we work very hard with the families to find the underlying causes of truancy. And we work with them very close to try to put services in place and uh, families that continue to be more compliant, we're able to file petitions with the DA office, petition requests to uh, let those cases go before the judge. Thank you. Is that it? Is that it? Do you have any yes. other questions? We have yes. 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 in a minute. Yeah. Bad. Oh, bad. 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 Thank you so much. Is so anyone here to speak in opposition of this ordinance? Well, that, that concludes the public hearing ordinances. We move the ordinances to final passage. Ordinance number 5286 of 2013, amending the budget of revenue and expenditures. So moved. We've done it. Right. Been moved by Commissioner Dominic, second by Commissioner Escudet. Are there any discussion? <coughs> she doesn't 
tell us? I mean, I just was curious what they did, and we've switched this around and asked them questions in the past, and so it's nice that today we're being a real stickler for all the rules. Ultimately, it's about serving the community and being an effective governmental body, um, and rules of order are, are a good guideline to follow. Um, she said what she did. Thank you. Commissioner Johnson? <laughs> Is this a, a all-in, all-out type agreement with the city and the school board? They don't put up their 60% on the way out, or about 60% going automatically. That's a question. If it doesn't, we ain't got nobody to talk to. Me. The city of Shreveport, what's the <coughs> It's my understanding, Matthew, you may have to help me, but we'll put up 60 in the city of Shreveport, put up 60. If it doesn't happen, it's right. like going to. Right. The, the school board already has their money up and, and the people oh, ready. And so, yes, and, and then in talking to the city council and, and, and all out. the mayor, everybody um, has to do it. I mean, this was actually the mayor's idea, so hopefully he'll be able to follow through. That's not his question. Can anybody answer this question? Can anybody answer this question? The question is, if, if, if somebody does not put up their money to fund the truancy, is the whole program gone? Uh, I hope not. Can you, uh, Can you address yeah. Commissioner Johnson? Uh, he asked the question. Well, I, I, hope, Commissioner, I hope not. Let me just play. I know. We, we already started the program. We into the school year. A few more months and we'll get done for the year. Now, <coughs> going forward, if we don't get our money in advance, then I think we'll be a, for not. Oh, yeah. Right now we're all in. We started already. Okay. That was the original design was that if we don't put up ours, they're not going to put up theirs. We have already started. The people are already hired and working and they're, they're really are counting on it. If we don't get it, um, the city is going to back up. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I clearly see this on that. Is the city progress thing on? Is that it, Commissioner? That's it. Thank you. Commissioner Epperson. So are we saying the city is waiting on us? That's what he said. That's what he said, yeah. Okay, the city is waiting on us. So we know this time. The program is in place and we've got people working uh, on speculation that the money will be there, right? That's what I understood you say. What we have right now, sir, the uh, city. <coughs> I met with the mayor. The city directed Charles. It, it's the it's their version of Eric Bryan, the, the the money manager. <coughs> he directed him to find the sixty thousand dollars in their budget to put it in. So there, there. It's not been said essentially that that um, that if we don't, they won't. But that was the original discussion five six months ago was that we'll put up 60, they'll put up 60. It's never come to that kind of an ultimatum, but that's what they said. You you were at the uh, city budget deliberations, weren't you? Yes, sir. You there? The intergovernmental? No, at the, at, the, at the actual city council meeting when they were talking about the budget. Yes, I sure was. What did they say then? It was not in their budget. I mean, is that what you're asking? That's My recollection was is it's not in their budget. Um, we had a meeting following that with the mayor where the mayor directed his financial manager to find it, to find the 60000 anyway. <laughs> have they found it? I have not had any communication from them since that meeting. <coughs> What's going to happen, Mr. Epperson, if they don't do it, the program, I believe, will go forward with a much reduced staff. What they're going to do is they're going to take the school board's money, they're going to take our money, and they're going to have fewer people working in the project. If they get the city's money, they'll be able to hire additional people and help more children. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> as I stated earlier, I'm not, you know, in, in favor of this. Uh, for a number of years, I've been talking about the deficit in the juvenile uh, services fund, and as we know, that has grown substantially from 1957 up to this point. <laughs> I think the last time I had a hard number on it was about 2.5 million. And when I called the other day to get some information on it, uh, Ms. Barnett told me this year is projected to be 2.9 million. <coughs> and uh, since I got that figure, I, I've asked uh, Finance to give uh, me a breakdown as to why this deficit continues to escalate. Uh, also, uh, Mr. Walker, how many, uh, the Juvenile Services Department, how many factions are, is it divided into? Like, do you have judicial, administrative, so Juvenile Services really is two, probation and detention. Probation you, and detention. You have a third, which is the court. 
Okay. So those are three budgets that you work with? Well, I work with just the two, probation and detention. You as a commission body, and this is more for Erica really or Mr. W Dr. Wilson, but you have the third, which is the court. I don't I don't even know what the court's budget. That's the judges and Ted Cox. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. And uh, I understand the city have four teachers that they uh, school board that they, they send over and they give thirty thousand I'm assuming in cash. But what I was looking at is uh, I come uh, there's some vacant schools in the system. We got the uh, West Shreveport Elementary, Central Elementary, Hillsdale Elementary, Hamilton Terrace, Laurel Street, which has a sale that's pending on Laurel Street. Uh, soon to be vacant Oak Oak Park. <coughs> upon the relocation of the Bethune campus. They recently sold Hendrix on Pier Avenue, and I think they sold Halston. So that should have been some funds generated. Uh, they have some vacant and usable sites on 79th Street, George Washington Carver down in south of the parish, Pine Valley, and Rodessa. I look at the savings that uh, that they are encountering by not having to pay utilities at all of those schools that are shut down, whereas it appears to me that that more than sixty thousand dollars can come up with. Plus, it's my understanding I think they're going to uh, terminate the uh, superintendent. I think his salary is about what two hundred and seven thousand. They can do a lot with that. I think his salary is two hundred and seven thousand. He'll be gone in August, so. Uh, they have a ship with the uh, first mate in charge, <laughs> so we got two hundred twenty thousand there. You, you and uh, I, uh, <laughs> you know, I just see if we want to get in the currency business, we can do it better. What we should be focused on is why in the devil since 1957, 1.89 million operating the center that every time we turn around, somebody coming up with a new project. Uh, about something that they steady nipping and tucking, wanting another piece of this and another piece of that from us. When uh, we're plugging the hole on a deficit that they got over there. You know, you know, it appears to me that uh, well, we've got two facets over there. If we can tighten that belt up, maybe, belt up maybe another half a notch or a notch, uh, we might have come out with 30000 a piece from somewhere. <coughs> I remember during our budget deliberation, we were talking about the potential for the old hot water heaters rupturing and overflowing where my hot water heaters are in the attic at my home, surrounded by a drain tube, and I install sensors in the event of a leak, then it will go off to warners. Rather than having to spend, I forget what amounts of money that was, I thought we was looking at maybe we could do that over there, which probably could have been more than 60000 replacing those heaters, so uh, we need to address why. I don't know what we started out, but I've asked, you know, but uh, I'm pretty sure it wasn't $2.9 million, <coughs> which is going to be this year, 1957. You, you know, and, and you're plugging that hole from somewhere else, and then we're coming up with new programs. You know, we need, something needs to be looked at a little closer than that. And I'm not going to support this. Thank you. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch. Okay. Um, I mean, I've gone on record quite extensively uh, for my work with the Juvenile Justice Committee over the last nine years as to why I'm not supporting this. Um, but primarily, you know, I think it's an expansion of the parish's role um, that we should not be uh, getting into that we should get out of. I'm not really sure how we got in it. We got in it trying to help out the school system. And now, you know, if they're on the um, the mother's milk, they don't want to get out. They don't want to get off. Um, the school board already gets 70% of the property taxes. They're getting federal money, Title One, Two, Three. I don't know, all kind of title money. Um, as well as additional federal and state monies. Um, and I'm just, you know, and, and their job is to keep kids in school. <coughs> um, and if they're failing to do that, 
you know, I don't know what those reasons are. There are a lot of different reasons, social reasons, economic reasons. Some of it, you know, has to do with instructions and a whole bunch of other things. But the bottom line is that they have a direct financial benefit from children being in school. They get the money. Um, and once they get their count, they get to keep the money to use it however they want to, whether the kids are there or not. Um, and if the kids are not there, they should use that money that they get, the FP money and all the other money that they get to service that school population to use it for truancy. Um, you know, we stepped up to the plate. Cattle Parish has never not stepped up to the plate, whether that's been in partnership with the city, with the school board, with the economic development entities, or what have you. We've done that. And a lot of times it's been on a you know one-time basis, maybe two-time basis. Uh, I don't think we went into this, when I was in the initial meetings, for this to become, for the parish to be a permanent funding source. That is not how it started. Uh, and I have not seen a reason that it should be made permanent uh, at this time. Uh, the city uh, was watching the budget meeting. Certainly, this is not something that has come up last minute. They have been at the table from the initial meetings. Uh, they are aware of the of the uh, of the situation. I think if it if it was the intent of uh, the body and the administration to fund truancy, it would have been in their budget. There's no excuse for it not having been in their uh, in their budget uh, because primarily, I think we just passed a, a tax for fire and police. So I know they have some money and, and I don't think it's that hard to find $60,000 in the city budget. And, and so uh, Commissioner Johnson's question I think is a, is a valid one. I don't know if, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that we have to, you know, go first before they come up with some money. Uh, but certainly, um, I don't know if I want to say that if they, you know, for, for folks that want to say <coughs> that if they don't, we shouldn't. Um, but certainly, they recognize the, um, the impact that it has on their uh, police time and all of that. And, and I think that's kind of how they came into it uh, as well. But again, none of that was supposed to be permanent. This, Dr. Dawkins asked us to give him some time and give the school board some time to figure out how they were going to move their money around, move their, take care of their operations organizationally and all of that. Can you just help us out? And, <coughs> and, um, and so I'm just not, I don't want to be in the truancy business. <coughs> and I, I don't think the, par the parish should uh, be funding uh, this program. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lynch. Commissioner Williams. Thank you, Madam I'm going to be supporting this. Um, um, I don't want to play politics with children. There's no value or dollar amount you put on a child's life, the truancy. Because of no thought of his or her own, that being sure of a salary for sickness, for neglect in the home, for being in a bad social environment, <coughs> and a bunch of other things. At the end of the day, they end up with us anyway. Um, because if they're on the streets out, they're gonna most likely commit some type of crime. They end up in the parents' juvenile detention facility or some alternative program. Anyway. So as a uh, prevention tool to use in truancy, we do have a mechanism in place to have a support system to help save some of these children. Uh, I was elected to lead. I'm not going to follow the school board. I'm not going to follow the city. Uh, there's a time to lead. There's a time to follow. It's time to have some, some leadership in this, in this regard, and we shouldn't be concerned about the dollar amount on the child. <coughs> and unfortunately, uh, school board haven't done their part, and the city haven't done their part. But we need to do our part, uh, because uh, these are all children, regardless of what segment of the community they come from, what color they are, what nationality. 
children or children in our community. And we need to provide a vehicle, a safe haven for them to get them off the streets. Uh, it's going to probably get worse during the summer, children being out and unsupervised. Uh, thank, thank God we do have some mechanism in place. It's not enough for an upper term. You go around other cities and town counties, they have a larger budget, a large children's children facility. Uh, this is where the rubber meets the road. It's our youth and our children and our system. So um, hopefully in the future that we'll, we can uh, plan ahead earlier with our collective bodies uh, and we'll be having these type of discussions about our children and truancy. And uh, we can uh, move forward and uh, work together and be proactive in, in maybe 2014. So uh, I will be supporting this and supporting the future. Thank you. Mr. Eskaday. Chairman Commissioner Williams, I'm going to support this as well. You know, it very well may need not be our direct responsibility, the truancy issue. It may be the responsibility of the school boards. It may be that of the cities. Certainly put the burden on them. But the end result is if they fail in those efforts, it falls into our lap at the juvenile detention center. And you're talking about $60,000 to prevent and maybe introduce <coughs> children from committing crimes ending up as guests at the juvenile detention center. But if you just let one child slip through the crack and, he, and, and our average census out there increases by one, you've exceeded that $60,000 amount annually. If it's by two, you'd probably cost yourself 150. It doesn't really matter whose responsibility is the end result is if it's not taken care of we're the ones who pay the price so in light or in lieu of or until we can get the governing bodies together and come up with a long-term solution i prefer to invest the sixty thousand into something that i know has traditionally worked in the past rather than build our census up at the juvenile detention center which will cost us much more in the end Mr. Williams said, we're gambling with children here. Let's, let's not worry about, you know, who's responsible or whose job. If they're not doing their job, let's step up and do it. We have the resources to do it, understand their stress. <coughs> Doesn't make it right. Doesn't mean, you know, if your neighbor's house is on fire and there's nobody putting it out, and you see the wind's blowing it towards your direction, but it's just not my fire, it's not my responsibility, you're going to let it go ahead and come over and burn your house? I think not. Well, okay. We need to do this, and, and we need to do it for the children, and we need to take the lead, and hopefully we can come up with a long solution. As far as the argument about the 1969 tax passed and all, in, in the last 15 years, the voters have said no twice to an increase in the juvenile budget. And it's not that big a deal. If you look at it strictly that it's got a deficit, then it's a big deal. But considering the fact that the voters have entrusted us over the years, with the ability to take excess funds from certain areas to plug that hole, which we've done, then there's really no big problem. And if it was that big of a problem on its own on the balance sheet, we wouldn't have the credit rating we have. So, you know, th th that argument's really old and outdated. If you want to, money, more money's not the answer. If you want to go to the voters with a tax, to increase true revenue that goes into juvenile, that's fine. I want to go to them with a millage reduction on some area where we have excess or collected excess because increasing taxes is not the answer. It's utilization of funds. So we may not have the appropriate funds collected into the departments and budgets where they need to go, but overall we have the money to do what we need to do. We've been managing that budget. So, you know, I don't care if the tax wasn't passed since 1900. And on the side of that, if you look at it this way, it's like you've got your vacation account and you've got your home improvement account. You put a little money everywhere, you know, and all of a sudden your roof has got a crack in it and you need to do some work and you say, well, I don't have enough money to do it. But you tell your wife, but you know, we have access in the vacation account. We're not even going to go on vacation. Well, no, we can't touch that. That's a vacation account. So you let the roof leak? That argument is old and it doesn't wash. Um, and I'm, I'm not for new taxes. So you want to consider showing up juvenile and making that thing look good so the number looks good? That's fine. It's fine where we're going to reduction. Uh, uh, we can reduce them somewhere else. But ultimately, that's not what we're deciding today. We're talking about this truancy issue, preventing children, keeping them in school, preventing them to go out there, getting in crime, getting in trouble so that they're our guests on a permanent basis. You know, and, you know, I, w I would think that everybody would approve that considering all the rhetoric we hear about quality of life and improving our schools and improving our neighborhoods and all that kind of stuff, man. 
you know, and that's just it from the school board level on down. Everybody talks about the children, <laughs> the last one served, always the last one served when it gets down to spending the money. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Yes, good day, Commissioner Dominique. Call for the question. No. Question has been called. Second. 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 Okay. Mm. Commissioner Lynn. Lynn. No chance. Please vote. That passes. Okay. Thank you, vote. That passes. Mm -hmm. Eleven. Nine. 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 Now, um. Vote on the motion. We will vote on the motion. <coughs> All in favor? Please vote. Okay. Uh, vote what? Yes, no. Favor, vote yes. Yeah, vote yes. Vote yes. That passes eight to three. Eight to three. Eight to three. Next item. 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 Next Next item. 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 Next Repealing ordinance number 5281 of 2012 pertaining to the proposed amendments to the Federal Parish Home Rule Charter. Ordinance number 5289 of 2013 to revoke the dedication of portion of Pines Road Extension. Ordinance number 5290 of 2013 to revoke the dedication of portion of Pleasant Hills Road and Pleasant Hills Farm Subdivision. Ordinance number 5291 of 2013 declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorize the purchase of administrative residence sales tax interest. Next, we move to work session minutes for ratification. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Lynch. Second by Commissioner Dominic. Any discussions? Please vote. Okay. That passed. Next item, Mr. Clerk. Next move to resolution. Resolution number 7, 2013. Fish construction improvement right along the right away of Fishman Road, Island Road, and Motes Island Circle. I'm moving, Chair. Second. Move by Commissioner Lee. Second by Commissioner X. Commissioner Everson. Are there any discussion? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Lee. Yes. I'm asking Mr. Ward, would you come up, sir? I just I'd like to explain. Uh, about the master plan and the future development for that area. Uh, maybe you get some insight on what the future plans are for uh, the Wells Island Road. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Dara wanted to be here. She had another appointment, so she had to leave. So I'm going to read a statement that she had, in the, and she's been texting me a few comments since uh, since she left. She pretty much says that the Wells Island Road isn't specifically identified in the text of the master plan. However, it is located within the Shreveport Cattle Planning Area. It is subject to the planning principles and recommendations as they relate to land, land use. Properties located along Wells Island Road are identified as light industrial slash business park and single family um, and single family where it describes here. Uh, additionally, the master plan recommends location industrial uses where it is easy for railroad, uh, road, port, and or air, air transportation all of which exist in the, the close proximity of Wells Island Road. Successful industrial business uses and supporting services typically depend on reliable water and sewer due to the intensity associated with the operation of these uses. The master plan recommends in favor of partnerships that would improve infrastructure, existing development areas that would improve development impact, smart growth, and the principles that guide the future land use recommendations. She also went back to, to indicate that the master plan doesn't necessarily recommend that the local government pick up the entire tab, but they also will look at partnerships and uh, also subsidize. Uh, that's, those are kind of in her words. <coughs> I'm not aware of that, but that, but that information, but that's what she decided to leave uh, with y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Mark the bow tie. <laughs> Members of this body, we 
<coughs> on the work session, we dialogued where we debated what was unconstitutional or illegal. Within our charter, it does recommend that we can partner up with public and private partnerships on profit or right away to easement that are dedicated particularly for utility sewage and other uh, project pertaining to what is the best interest of the public. You heard from Commissioner Lane regarding this investigation of reaching out to the business people out there. That water is unsafe. Minerals in it. You got senior citizens, you got children living up there drinking water with iron in it. That's not right. We're not that kind of uh, country, we're not that kind of parish. Uh, to see poor people and working folk that have been paying the taxes here uh, <coughs> drinking that kind of water. There has been some framework for the Well Lighting Road Industrial Park for business and economic development and for job and job retention. Also, you just heard from the master plan regarding the future development of the area to attract new injury and job. We ought to also use it for tax credit and tax incentive, maybe also utilize our free enterprise zone uh, program to attract industry up there. <coughs> the dedication to a government body is not unusual or, or an easement or right away. It's been going on for 25 years, <coughs> as I know of. The people up there are not asking for a handout, they're asking for a hand up. We have bailed out Wall Street and gave them billions of dollars. And now we're trying to just help out Main Street to have helped us in Cattle Parish maintain the service that we have. And we sit down here and say, yes, we want to do business. We want to attract industry. We want to attract new growth and development. But we pick and choose the area of town that's want to grow. Now, with I-49 coming, we need growth is coming in that direction. We need to be proactive in developing North Shreveport. We don't know, we don't develop South Shreveport. We're going to develop the East Street Port. We're going to develop the West Street Port. Providing for land only for economic and the safe development of land, according to really promote community with water system, sewage system, utility system, require an easement or right of way dedicated for anything of value. So if you dedicate your property as an easement, that's a dedicated property for public use which makes it legal, not on private property. And we should have a balanced approach, but one side doesn't fit all. First, the public health, the safety for the economy, and good order and the appearance and the convenience, just the morals just to do it right. The morals are the one to make you do it right. But no fault of their own analytical put them in the position to be where they are today. No fault of the people own. It can be them tomorrow, it can be your loved one, your children, your grandmother, your sister, brother could be in that same predicament. Would you say no to them? If you were to look at call all the counties all over America, they, they are doing these type of proactive and progressive things in their district, which makes it not illegal. <clears throat> And then you work together to decide the width of the main go being there together. <clears throat> and according with the engineer and what should be connected to a municipal municipality, they would prefer to be tied into the city water. In the 21st century, we ain't got no business drinking minerals and water for children and family. It may be good to wash our machine, but it ain't good to drink. It's not good to drink. Lead poison and all that in that water. Iron and lead in the water. That's not right. You're not that kind of people I know. The commission are not them kind of folks to do that. So I hope that, uh, uh, Tim, that we will have a public private <coughs> cooperation with the parish and achieve and dedicate the public even the right of way. And uh, it won't restrict any future development or commercial development at all. It will enhance development in that area. And what I mean by balance approach, let's look at what we get out of it in return. That was asked. 
people are going to be potentially retaining the job that could potentially be lost because they made the decision to stay here in cattle. Mr. Williams, the time's up. I'm preaching right now. I, can't I know stop. you got to stop. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but I, I need to extend my time. I got about three minutes. This is this is a very serious matter. If it was you, I extend your time. Okay, three okay. minutes. Thank you. Three. Um, it's not unusual to negotiate because what was required was 61 percent. They got 72 percent. They went above, beyond, and beyond. So I hope that my colleague will look at this as a business investment with future and later returns on our investment. <coughs> we should move forward, not move backwards. And I hope that, um, that you will consider supporting this project, look at the potential increase it's going to have, it's going to increase the property value, because you're going to get taxes off of it. If you increase the property value, the tax is going to go up. That's a benefit. That's money. That's cash. That's money. <coughs> we'll start off with the recognition of humanitarian initiative and a business venture. And we should support those that have been supporting us with jobs, with taxes, and with the people that are working. And I hope that you will support this based on the information uh, that I received, that I went and worked to get, working with the people. That's government and, and business working together for a project, together. Even our own public works department said it's a good project. We have confidence in our leadership and our leaders. We can recoup what we invested through other ways, through grants, we can get our money. The other way we can get our investment back. Why do we to keep moving forward? Don't people don't want to turn back around. We can find out a reason why we should not do something. Let's find some reason why we should do something. For the betterment of our community, for the morals and the character, and most of all for cattle parish new values that we have up here. We're all in this thing together. So let's vote together and let's move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Williams. Commissioner Lynn? I'm going to repeat a lot of what we talked about earlier. Um, and then first I'm going to clarify what, my, what I said earlier also is that the water is safe to drink up there. I, I drank it and I've drank water that was a lot worse than it for a long period of time. And not all the business owners want the pipeline of water going up there. And even if we did run it up there, the people that cannot afford a, a well to need water for their private homes are still going to have to put in a private line from the from the water main to their house with an anti-blowback valve that the city requires which is going to be three to five thousand dollars and so there is still a need in there this is not a cookie cutter cure that we can just throw money at each individual property owner there has their own particular circumstance that needs to be addressed some of them need to go to the uh, Caddo Council on Aging to help them with water. Some of them may need to go to another agency with water. And since we fund all of these agencies, it'll be very easy for us to work with them <coughs> to have them all come to the table. One particular person needs to put a filter in their system so that their toilet doesn't run brown. One person needs more pressure so they need a higher up tank. Another company said, under no grounds should the parish spend any money at all not a single penny to run a water line out here all these businesses and all of these homes have been getting free water for the past 30 years and they knew that they were getting it for the past 30 years illegally is what they said and was totally against it and so the community of wells island is not all on the same page and should not be addressed with a blanket fixation of, of, of the issue. I mean, we need to communicate with all of them, and I certainly want to see all of the businesses succeed there, and I would like to help them, and I would like to see the homeowners have water as well. However, putting the line out just right off the bat may, and it might not be the cure-all that they need. This resolution 
the simple fact that you can't pull money out of the oil and gas fund underneath the resolution makes this resolution null and void. It doesn't matter if you vote yes or no to it today. It doesn't mean anything because you have to have an ordinance to pull money out of the riverboat gaming. I would hope that we can move this to either an economic development committee or to some other committee to go and actually visit with the people one-on-one. -on -one. I know that Ken Ward has visited with several of the people and everybody has their own issue up there. It's, and even if we did run the water up there, it would not cure everybody's problem. Some people still would not have water to their home because they don't have the $4,000 to, to drill a well. They're not going to have the $4,000 to run a water line from their house to the main pipeline. It's not, it's not a cure-all. Anyway, thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner Lynch. Commissioner Lynch is not in here. Commissioner Dominic. Um, I would just like to say a, a few things. Um, you know, as we're looking at doing a water study um, in the future growth of I-39, and I even met with a couple of mayors um, yesterday talking about the issue of water. Um, you know, and ultimately that water study will going to involve the parish doing things to try to connect these water lines um, in, in the northern part of the parish, the southern part of the parish. Um, I think we all feel that something needs to be done if we could. Mm -hmm. It's just I feel that the way it's being submitted with the ordinance issues, that there's some legality issues, um, and in particularly the way we voted Monday, you know, I, when I came to, to the meeting, I was looking at the 9010 situation. I didn't know that, and I thought that's what, how they signed a petition, and it got kind of flip-flopped. That's not what they wanted. Um, <coughs> something needs to be done to try to help these people. There are, this, it's not just a residential. It is a partially the 13 businesses and 23 homes out there. Uh, when I looked at it before when I was doing the numbers, the if a lien was placed on the property of the residence, it didn't seem to be that much. It was <coughs> had the larger lineage footage, which were the businesses, I think. I just I think we need to step back and, and keep looking at this issue to try to resolve it if we can. I just don't feel that at this point I can support something where the parish is going to uh, pay 100% of everything at this time, and uh, that's where I'm at, but um, my opinion. Thank you, Commissioner Dominic. Commissioner yesterday. Yes, um, th there's no doubt that uh, those people out there may need some sort of assistance. And what the extent of that assistance is, <coughs> I'm not sure. Um, and it's, you know, just something that's kind of fell into our lap through a series of events that have taken place, as Mr. Williams said, over 30 years. But wh what I do know is this, that... Um, if I was as passionate as Commissioner Williams is about the project and he is about this and in effect that, I would expect that people in public works would have the good sense to tell me it's a good project because they wouldn't want to tell me a different based on how I may react. The uh, Ms. Sanders in her report from the master plan said that the master plan identified these type of partnerships and all. But I don't think the master plan or Billy Clancy went in depth to find out what type of partnerships were allowed by the laws of the state that we live under. Same way that there are progressive counties out there, as Commissioner Williams has informed us, of <coughs> these type of things. Well, I don't know what the laws are in the states where those counties are located. All I know is this, that we need to help them, but what we have here today doesn't help them. All it does is it lets our uh, public works people have to begin a process that ultimately may be determined illegal action anyway. So why would we want to spend our resources and our time and effort on something that we're not sure we can even do? So I'd rather be sure and find out the extent of what it is we can do by way of assistance and with that knowledge proceed by trying to find a solution. And based on the comments from the people who are here Monday, I'm surprised 100 percent of the folks out there didn't sign up because when you go to somebody and say, you know, hey, we're going to do this for you, you're interested, we're going to pay for it, and I'm all over that. You know, so 
I don't. I just think from top to bottom, there's some uh, confusion about one what what was promised, what was expected, what we can do, and and I'd like to just this Commissioner Lynn suggest sit back, find out what we're allowed to do, not only by our own law, by state law, and come up with something if we can that makes sense, rather than you know have me, which I can't do in good conscience. Sign off on a resolution that is null and void the minute we pass it, because I believe at this point, at least, it's in violation of state law. But let me finish by saying I do want to find a way to help, but I want to do something to make sense and do something that's legal. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner today. Um, and I want to also, uh, while <coughs> Commissioner Escudet kind of brought up some things that I want to say, is that I, I too want to help. Uh, this community and their need and also you know I, I can't conceivably just say help them without thinking about some of the others who have come before us as well needing help uh, in the same fashion or in the same line and I too like Commissioner Escudo would rather we get um, an opinion from the Attorney General if I may uh, to, uh, to make sure that we are doing the right thing as far as uh, helping are supporting this uh, community with um, their water issues and their water needs. So, um, Commissioner Williams, I want to do everything I can to help and help the people in the Wells Island Road area. And I also think about the ones that's in other areas in Commissioner Johnson's district and uh, even in the past in Commissioner Thibodeau's district, who too who also has had some water issues. So, um, I would ask if I could. Uh, before we end today, if we could get a, a friendly amendment to um, get an attorney general's opinion on this uh, issue before we go ahead and support it and vote to um, help this uh, community. Madam Chair, point of information. I think you were suggesting that we have a, a uh, substitute motion. Right. To request the AG's opinion. Is that what your intention is? Then I second that. <coughs> it's, been, it's been motioned by the chair and second by Commissioner S today um, for the amendment to your motion. Uh, I don't know what's going on in me. It's not an amendment, it's a uh, substitute motion. It's it's substitute motion. Substitute I don't know what I will say, but uh, you know, we are in public. Substitute motion. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been second by Commissioner S today. <coughs> Mr. <coughs> uh, you couldn't be sec second because you spoke before making your motion. You should have made your motion, got a second, then spoke. Someone else will have to make that. So, maybe I'll make a motion. Oh, you you can't, you gotta be ready. <laughs> okay. Wait, just hold on. Oh, the whole thing don't sit. Commissioner. I'm, I'm up to speak. We, we'll just go ahead and keep moving. Commissioner Lynch, go ahead and speak. I have a question. That vote. passes. My vote. Uh, my vote didn't count. My vote didn't register. It didn't what was your vote? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it would. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, we vote on the motion that's on the floor. Now we vote on the motion that's on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Can we hear the uh, motion again, Clerk, Commissioner Clark? Resolution. Resolution number seven. Is a resolution. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> I mean, that's the construction approved right around the window. Yeah. I don't know. 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 I don't it's just a resolution. Mm -hmm. That's the point. It was never introduced. He didn't know what it was. That's true. That's not. That's two motions. Is that the vote? All right. That fails. 
Next item is support. We have no new business. Move to Move to Move to They don't all need the same thing.